Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf. It's been a little bit. I didn't upload last Sunday and neither on Wednesday because I did something really, really outrageous. I took a couple of days off, mainly from work and booktube and uploading videos is for pleasure, but I still decided no schedule, nothing. So sorry about that. Outrageously, I was on vacation, so to speak. <laughs> but I'm back um, and with another book haul because I bought a couple of books, um, all of them books that I've been meaning to read for quite a while um, and planning to hopefully get to uh, in the remainder of this year. Let's get started. And the first one um, is a classic, uh, Charlotte Bronte's Villette, first published in 1853, her lay, lay <laughs> her last novel. Um, and if you're following me, you probably remember vaguely um, that at some point, I think last year, I decided to read or reread all of Jane Austen's work and all of the Bronte sisters' work. Um, I haven't read all of that, so partly it's only only partly it's a reread. But the books that I did read, I read a long time ago in German when my English still wasn't good enough to read them in the original. So I decided to read all of them partly as a reread in English. Um, I finished the Jane Austen uh, task, quote unquote, um, and uh, the Bronte sisters, I have Villette left, which I already started, as you can see, um, and then two more, uh, Shirley uh, and The Professor. I hope I will still get to both of those this year because, uh, you know, completist and everything. But anyway, Villette is the story of Lucy Snow, who is um, from a okay family, good family, but no money. And she is an orphan. And then we follow her journey, uh, trying to find her place in the world. And the main portion of the book is set in Villette, which is a fictional village in Belgium, uh, in the French part, uh, French speaking part of Belgium, uh, where uh, Lucy teaches at a school for young girls. Um, I'm halfway through and I'm reading this actually with uh, Nicola, uh, who used to have a booktube channel called Robotnik. Um, she doesn't up she hasn't uploaded for a long time, so she said goodbye to booktube, but she's still on Instagram, so I will leave a link to at least her Instagram account down below. Um, and um, Nicola was actually, she's from Glasgow, but now lives in, in California, and Nicola was actually one of the very, very first booktubers that I discovered and followed. So I'm really happy that at least we are in touch uh, through the buddy read. So I will keep you posted because this one is definitely one that I will finish this year. And the next one is Liz Moore, Long Bright River, which was published earlier this year. Um, uh, and I've uh, read Liz Moore's previous book, Unseen World, which I really, really loved. So when I saw that she had a new book out, I think it was beginning of the year, I definitely wanted to read it. And then, you know, reasons, you forget about it. But Finally, I bought myself a copy, a used bookstore copy, which is completely pristine. Is it pristine or pristine? Well, it, it's, it, it's you know, a really good copy. Anyway, and this one is uh, quite different in the sense that it, it is a crime novel. Um, it's about two sisters, um, Mickey and Casey. Mickey works as a police officer um, in, is it Philadelphia? Well, it's the 24th district, um, big city somewhere in the U.S. I think it's Philadelphia, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, and her sister, younger sister, Casey, um, is uh, a drug addict and works as a prostitute. And the, the story or the premise is that uh, young women are found murdered and Casey is missing. And Mickey, as a police officer, investigates both. So I'm I'm really curious to see um, whether this is a straightforward crime book, which which is okay. I love crime novels, as you know, or whether Liz Moore, given her previous book, does something more with it. Such a pun. Oh, 
but I'm I'm excited uh, for this one, um, and I expect at least a fast-paced thriller and maybe something more. The next three books I bought are all debut novels, and you know that I'm really interested in discovering new authors, reading debuts, and all three of them have been published either last year or the year before, so obviously I didn't get to them in the year they were published. And the first one is The Parisian by Isabella Hamad, which was published uh, published last year in April. Um, Isabella Hamad is a London-based author, and this book is historical fiction. It's set right after uh, uh, the First World War, and we follow a young uh, Palestinian man um, who then moves to Paris, uh, trying to find his way. That's what I know about the book. Um, in, you know, foreshadowing the coming of the Second World War. Um, I was really intrigued by uh, the premise, the Palestinian struggle for independence. You know, it's not that it has been resolved and probably won't anytime soon. And um, the time frame between the two world wars is a period that I'm interested in personally. Um, so I'm uh, looking forward to this one. Um, like I said, published last year. So maybe you've read it. If you have, uh, let me know what, uh, what you think, whether I made a good choice with this one. But you never know with a debut novel, of course. The second debut novel I bought is even older. It's from 2018. And that's Helen... Whoops. Yeah, like this. Helen Cullen, uh, The Lost Letters of William Wolfe. Um, Helen Cullen um, is um, an Irish author living in London. Uh, she worked in broadcasting and now works for Google, but we'll forgive her for that, I guess. Um, and uh, Lost Letters of William Wolfe follow our main character, William Wolfe, uh, who works in the Dead Letter Depot in London, um, it, which means letters who can't uh, be uh, delivered because either the zip code is missing or the hand, you can't read the handwriting, the address. And so they're, they're a team of letter detectives, if you uh, will, who try to find out where the letter is supposed to go and deliver it. And William Wolfe then finds letters only addressed to my great love. Um, and he starts to investigate the letters from a woman called Winter, I think. Yeah, a woman called Winter, written by a woman named Winter to a soulmate she hasn't met yet. Um, the book is told, as I understood, from two perspectives, William uh, and his estranged wife. Um, I have to say, I know, if you're now frowning, towards the screen that this book has uh, received quite mixed reviews and the Goodreads um, uh, rating for what it's worth is below 3.5. So I guess Doris from all the books would never pick up this book, but I just like the premise and I want to see for myself. So maybe it will be a dud, but I still decided that this is one of the debuts uh, from previous years that I haven't read that I want to pick up. And the third debut novel, also from 2018, May 2018, is Heather Abel, The Optimistic Decade. Um, Heather Abel uh, was born in Santa Monica, or she grew up in Santa Monica, but now lives, lives in Northampton, Massachusetts. Um, she published work in magazines. She worked as a journalist, um, and this is obviously her first novel. Duh. Um, it's set in 1990 uh, in the Colorado desert, um, and we follow a range of characters um, in this time frame uh, with protests against Reagan and the, the Gulf War. Uh, it's about oil, um, and one of the characters, Cal Caleb, um, is um, has a, a, a bought land and is now having uh, established its community of living simply. And then you have two ranchers who uh, sold their land to Caleb but want it back. And you have a young woman who is an activist. So it seems quite a, a range of characters in this, I think, very uh, interesting time uh, in 1990. Um, and 
this book got quite the buzz when it came out uh, two years ago or two and a half years ago, I should say, um, and then sort of faded away. Um, and um, I liked the premise, you know, the 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 oil bust and the the Colorado desert thing and uh, the range of characters, uh, which reminded me you know, of other novels that I really liked. Um, for instance, Mac Woolard said that the interestings where you have this, you know, this group of, of people and their interaction. And I'm, yeah, I don't know. I, I will see what, what I, uh, feel about the book, but, um, I decided like with the others, obviously, uh, that I want to give it a try. Another project that I would like to finish this year is my decade reading project. I don't know if you remember that from way back when, when I even made videos about the project. I, I didn't do that in quite a while, but I'm still working on the project. And if you're not familiar with it or forgot, <laughs> which was quite possible because I haven't talked about it in quite a while. Um, at the beginning of this year, 2020, I decided that one of the uh, reading projects that I want to do is read a book um, that I missed, quote unquote, from 2010 until 2019 and a nonfiction and a fiction book for each year. Um, and I'm slowly making my way through the years. And for the nonfiction book of 2017, I bought Ariel Levy's uh, Rules Do Not, The Rules Do Not Apply. Um, Ariel Levy is a staff writer for The New Yorker. And her memoir, this is a memoir, um, is about her life focusing on a particular event um, in 2012 when she was 38 years old. So she's born in the mid-1970s um, and she was married and her wife owned a business um, and she was a successful writer for The New Yorker and pregnant and she went to Mongolia in 2012 um, for a reporting um, assignment and then everything in her life goes to shit completely. Um, that's basically all I know uh, about the memoir, but I, I picked this um, as my nonfiction um, read that I missed for 2017 uh, because the reviews were really good and I've heard a lot about this book and I am meant to read it back then, but didn't. So this one will hopefully help me uh, to complete my decade reading project. And the last book I want to show you is also for the decade uh, reading project, this time for fiction for the year 2016, and that is The Dark Circle by Linda Grant. Uh, Linda Grant is um, a journalist working in the UK, and I read some of her feature uh, stories or articles that she published in The Guardian, um, uh, especially about the, uh, the war in Serbia, um, and I really liked her writing, but um, I never read any fiction by her. So this will be my first try with her fiction. And again, it's a book that has received quite some mixed reviews. It's set in the 1950s and we follow two teenage um, uh, protagonists, uh, Miriam and her brother, I think Lenny is his name, yes, um, who live in East London and who both contract tuberculosis and are sent to a sanatorium in Kent. Um, and then the story takes off from there. So as I understood, the main portion of the book is set in this sanatorium where they, they meet quite a wide array of very, very different people. Um, uh, despite um, the yeah mixed reviews, I'm interested in this sanatorium setting. If you're following me, you probably know that Thomas Mann's book, The Magic Mountain, set in a sanatorium in uh, uh, in Switzerland, is one of my favorite books. I like this idea of you know the sort of claustrophobic setting um, where you can't escape and the people thrown together there from all kinds of backgrounds and the only thing that binds them, uh, connects them, is their shared illness. Um, and there's also a sort of a personal 
um, for me, personal aspect, why I was interested in this book, because my father, um, uh, uh, when he was in his uh, early mid twenties, so in in the nineteen fifties, he contracted tuberculosis, and he was in sent to a sanatorium, of course not in Kent, uh, but in the. Um, uh, the Black Forest Mountains in Germany. He had just been engaged to my mother and he had to spend almost a year in uh, in that sanatorium and he obviously recovered and they got married and they got me. Um, so I'm, yeah, it, it's something that resonates with me on a, on a more personal level. And so despite the mixed reviews, I decided uh, to give this one a try for the decade reading fiction 2016. So these were all the books that I bought recently, at least the books that I really hope that I will get to uh, in the course of this year. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you're all still safe and healthy. Um, let me know whether you read any of the books. Uh, maybe I should prioritize any of them um, or not. If you have strong opinions and negative opinions about one of the books, I'm looking forward to, uh, to your comments on this subject or any other. And I will see you all soon in the next one.